Alito, and welcome to Native Chalk Talk, a podcast by Natives for all. Here, we're keeping our Native ancestors' stories and history alive, while also sharing with you our Native cultures, traditions, and more. I'm Rachel Youngman, a Choctaw originally from Anadarko, Oklahoma. I hope you'll enjoy this journey with me as we learn from our Native American guests. And stay tuned for the end of each episode, where we'll talk about some great ways to support Native causes and or Native-owned businesses. Let's get started. If it seems like I'm all giddy today, y'all, it's because I am. This topic is so near and dear to my heart that it's truly an honor to share it with you. We're talking about my hometown, Anadarko, Oklahoma's 88th annual American Indian Exposition coming up August 2nd through 5th. This event is a longstanding tradition amongst our area's Plain tribes and many other tribes as well. For many years, we saw the likes of famous natives and movie stars and visitors from all over the world. However, the expo nearly faded away over the last few years due to multiple reasons, but one of those being the COVID pandemic, bringing our once glimmering fair to a screeching halt for the last three years. I want to see this expo restored to its former glory and then some. Listeners, if you'd like to experience a very real, uncommercialized, and authentic display of traditional Native community, please join us. This isn't an experience where you have to come feeling unsure if you're wanted. The people here in my hometown are kind and gracious, and they want you here, as do I. So this is an official invitation for you to join us at our American Indian Expo Parade and Fair on August 2nd, 2023, followed by ongoing days of the fair, August 3rd through 5th. You don't want to miss it. Here to talk about this big event and the history of our town is president of the American Indian Expo and former tribal director of the Apache Tribe of Oklahoma, Tanner Mossit, and Bambi Allen, secretary of the Expo and curator of the Southern Plains Indian Museum in Anadarko, where they're both sitting today. Welcome to you both. Are you excited for the parade and fair? I, I am. Um, the parade is one of my favorite things, um, just to see all the different tribes and businesses yeah. and Anadarko come together and showcase. Right. And I do think that that is one cool thing about Anadarko, among many, is that that is a time when our community really does come together and everybody's excited about it. And as I was saying before we started, my sisters and I, that was the thing we looked forward to every year in August. So how about you, Bambi? I know you've been really busy as well as secretary there. Um, how, how's it going? Are you are you looking forward to this 88th annual expo? Oh, very much so, yes. I think along with me and many of the community members, we are very excited to see the fair happen this year. This has to be a lot of work. So kudos to both of you and the rest of the team for all you're doing. We'll get into some details about what you listeners can expect from the expo. But first, we're going to talk about some interesting details about the history of our native town and this event, because you almost can't learn about one without the other. In my opinion, for those who love to learn about the past and furthermore about Native American history, Anadarko is a mecca of such history. And the ironic thing to me is not many people know about this area and it's really baffling (laughs) or maybe it's good to have this best kept secret in our pocket, but I digress. So Tanner, for our listeners, feel free to share with us where Anadarko is located. Um, Anadarko is located um, in the county seat of Caddo County. It lies along the south bank of the Washita River and the south central portion of the county. Um, It is situated 18 miles west of Chickasha and at the intersection of U.S. Highway 62, State Highway 9, and U.S. Highway 281. Bambi, what can you tell us about the history of this area and of Anadarko itself? Well, in around 1878, the Kiowa Comanche and Apache reservation was allotted. So the surplus lands were open to settlement in the area and lotteries happened to be held for the homesteads. So the town lots were auctioned and approximately around 5,000 buyers were living in what was called Ragtown. And that was in the east edge of Anadarko by around 1901. That Ragtown, I remember growing up not understanding 
what that was. I, yeah. So that was basically because of all the tents or something. You think? Yeah. Some people refer to it as tent city or Ragtown. either way, but I think the tents were not what you typically think of today, but more of like whatever cl cloth or material that they had to make it some were canvas or different things. So I think after the winds blow through of Oklahoma, everything turns a bit into a rag. <laughs> Truly does. And that red Oklahoma dirt gets all over everything as well. Well, I grew up in the Hog Creek area, which is west of town on Highway 9. And there were a lot of Kiowas. There's a lot of history out there that goes way back about the Kiowas that lived in the area. Where's Chapel is out there. I've spoken about it a few times when I talked to the Ware family on some of my previous episodes. And then Riverside Indian School is known for also being there. It's the oldest um, off reservation boarding school in the country. My dad also worked there. And then uh, I know the Tonkawa massacre uh, happened around the area of what is now called Indian City. Uh, the Kiowa recently were granted back that land uh, where Indian City is today. Uh, it used to be a place where people could go and see the different types of ways that different tribes, uh, plain tribes lived and uh, got to see artifacts and things like that out there. And we're all hopeful that Indian City will become another place for, for people to go that are trying to learn more about our Native American history. The Rock Island Railroad Depot uh, was out there. It was for a while called the Philomathic Museum, and now it's called the Anadarko Heritage Museum. I remember when I was growing up in the 70s, there was the oil boom um, that really, uh, there's some houses still left over there that were really very large, nice homes that kind of came up in that era. And then, of course, the, um, the bottom dropped out of the oil business for a while, and Anadarko still survived, though. So lots of tribal resources are also in the area, um, museums, the BIA has offices there, lots of things there in this town that I consider makes Anadarko a great fabric of various tribes and people and cultures that are all in one area. Would you guys so you did mention Indian City, and unfortunately it is closed to the public right now, but I cannot tell you how many times a week that visitors call or come by asking about it. So hopefully they will get it opened back up and it'll be a great service to the community when they do. So interwoven into the history of our town is 88 years of our American Indian Expo. Tanner, why don't you tell us about the history of the American Indian Expo itself? Um, so in 1935, it was incorporated as the American Indian Exposition with the purpose of promoting and retaining Indian cultural life, handmade crafts, and the Native American arts. The exposition it, um, features a program of dance contests, parades, beautiful baby contests, sporting events, um, and the fairgrounds also providing camp accommodations for participants. The American Indian Exposition prior to 1935 was held at Craterville Park. And the fair as we know it now is the successor to that fair. In 1931, it was actually called the Southwest Indian Fair, and it was held at Caddo County Fairgrounds in Anadarko. And then that was incorporated with a group of Indians that were not connected with the original organization from Craterville Park. And then it was necessary after that because they dissolved, it didn't work out very well. And so the American Indian Exposition was actually incorporated in, the 19, in 1935 by okay. Maurice Bidoka, Parker McKenzie, and Edgar Halfman. So it sounds like it was originally put on by Native Americans. This wasn't started by non-Natives as kind of like an expose of, which I like. I'm glad this was, hey, we want to share our culture with others. Very much so. And it is still one of the biggest all Indian ran organizations and events in America, really. There's a lot that um, are not, you know, maybe they might be 50% non-native run. So we are unique in that way. I know people from all over the state of Oklahoma and the US, and as I mentioned earlier, the rest of the world have come to the expo. Do you know what other countries have attended? We have definitely had people from Europe, I mean, we've had Germans come through, we've had people from Italy, France, many different locations, not in America. 
Yeah, I I once was kind of looking up um, just information on the expo is years ago, and I saw blog posts where a, many many Germans would come over. Yeah, and to this day, it's kind of funny that uh, Germany has a really large following for Native American culture, and they even have mock powwows there. Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting to see what that looks like if it's any different than what we experience here? YouTube. You will find a lot of stuff <laughs> on YouTube. You have to check that out. So what famous people do you know of who have visited the parade and fair over the years? Just to name a few, uh, John Wayne, Will Rogers, Elaine Miles, Irene Bedard, Roger Willey from Wind Talkers, and Roy Rogers. That's so cool. I mean, we've had some pretty interesting people come through and I know there's even more than that. That's just the list that we know of. I recently did an episode with Dodie Rogers, who's the adopted Choctaw daughter of Roy and Dale Rogers. And Roy was named Indian of the Year and was in the parade. And Dodie went to so many places with her famous parents and didn't remember being in Anadarko until I showed her a photo that the Anadarko Heritage Museum had sent me of Dodie and her parents riding in the parade. So that was really cool for her to see that and kind of remember being there. Um, who will be the Celebrity Indian of the Year this year? This year we have Lane Factor. He is a Caddo tribal member. And if anybody has seen Res Dogs, he is Cheese. <laughs> that is so, I'm so excited to see him. So will he be yes. in the parade riding down in a car or something? He yeah. will. He plans to make as many events that he can and he will be in both parades. That's so exciting. Yeah, I'm going to go to the parade. Um, my family and I will be there. And then uh, we'll try to go over the weekend to the horse racing. So I'm excited to hear more about that from y'all in just a moment. What tribes do we typically see represented in the expo? Um, the tribes that um, that we have that are involved with the American Indian Exp Exposition now, um, there's about 15 of them. Um, you, we have the, the KCAs, which is the Kawa Comanche Apaches, uh, the Wichita's, Caddo's, Delaware's. Port Sill Apaches, um, Osages, Pawnees, Poncas, Iways, Otos, um, Sac and Fox, and um, I think that's the 15 tribes that we have. That's fantastic. And so we'll see them getting to do their dances and some of them will bring their beadwork and artwork and that sort of thing, right? Yes. Fantastic. As I mentioned earlier, the expo didn't go on for about three years. The expo is more than just a parade and a fair. What does this event really mean to so many of us from Anadarko and the surrounding areas and to our tribes? Well, really it's a gathering for people of all ages in our community. Um, the elders, they get to reminisce about the glory days of the fair and what it meant to them and their families. And all the young folks now, they get to make memories that'll last them a lifetime. So true. I mean, it, there's so much community around it. And that's one of the things I, I absolutely love. It's not, you know, there are a lot of wonderful powwows that go on. This is more than just the powwow portion of the fair. There's, there's a lot to it. So Tell us about the festivities this year. I know there's typically been princess pageants. I think there's going to be a horse race this year, powwows, fancy dancing. What are we looking at here? We have a little bit of everything this year. Um, I believe on Sunday, the fair is going to kick off with the oldies dance. And then we roll right into Monday. We're taking entries for the art competition. And then Tuesday, we have the beautiful baby competition. And then it rolls right after that. We go into the princess activities. We have various tribal exhibitions going on in the evenings at the fairgrounds. We'll have gourd dance in the afternoon. We have a fun run, an archery competition on Saturday and competition dancing each evening at the fairgrounds. It's a long day and a fun day for sure. <laughs> yes. What time does it all end typically in the evenings? It can go on till 10 or 11 at night. <laughs> right. And then, so I know the parade starts at 10 um, on the uh, second and then 
from there on, that kind of kicks the whole thing off. And so where can people go to see an agenda of what's going on each day? So we have a Facebook um, and it's under the American Indian Exposition 1935. And that's where we post all of our flyers, all of our information, um, all of our um, list of activities that we have going on and agendas as such. So we mentioned dancing. What types of dancing will people see? I think one of the number one draws is going to be the men's fancy dance competition. People from all around come to see that. And then we'll have fire dancing every evening. And then there's men and women's um, traditional styles, as well as a couple of northern categories that'll be dancing. Fantastic. It's a feast for the eyes, for sure. Did you guys attend the expo as kids as well? Yes, I did. And what was your favorite part? Um, well, like I mentioned earlier, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the parade with the horses, you know, the princesses right? and all that. That was one of my favorite things as a child. Yeah, it does not disappoint. That is not just some parade where they're just throwing out candy to people. You get to see the dancing down the streets. Um, you get to see the mud men. That's always the mud, fun. Yes. <laughs> the ghost dancers, the fire dance. Oh my gosh, it is it is so much fun. So Bambi, did you grow up in Anadarko? Or oh, yes, I did. Up? And okay. the fair itself has been a big part of uh, growing up and my family's history, too. Um, I come from the Ware family. So as you oh, know, we've okay. been involved with the fair from the beginning in some capacity. And I know people will come up to me today and say, hey, I have a picture of you when you was a baby in the parade. And yeah. <laughs> so no it's always fun, funny to see the evolution of that. You know, you have people that come just to see, you know, the different families, because most of our years participating in the parade, we were always a walking group. And so one of my uncles or someone in the family would sing and then we'd stop along the way to dance. So I remember the teepees and tents that would be set up all over the fairgrounds. And it was such a fun community where people could meet for the first time and make new friends or spend several days with their families out and about. So will people still be setting up camping this year? Is that available? Yes. Oops. I'm so glad that hasn't gone away. So what's different about the expo this year, if anything? Yeah, I guess one of the biggest things that is different about this year's expo is that um, we do have the Indian Relay Horse Racing. Um, Ooh, yes, okay. I'm not sure that it's been to the American Indian Exposition before. I know we've had regular horse um, races, dog that... races. Yeah. I'm not sure that this specific type of race has been here. Um, it seems like it's um, becoming a, a bigger event, you know, kind of nationwide and it's yeah. drawing a lot of attraction so having it here at the expo this year we're pretty excited to watch it's I very neat because i know it's popular up north in a lot of the states up there and with mm -hmm. a lot of the tribes but it's kind of new to oklahoma in general and so i yeah. think it's only happened a couple of times so it's pretty interesting to see the crowds grow for this and the interest for the community well, here's a favorite topic for myself and many people. What can we expect fair food wise? Tell me there will be some Indian tacos, some fried food. What will we have there? You can expect the works. We're going to have a little bit of everything. Of course, there will be Indian tacos and then there'll be meat pies and the funnel cakes. And we just have a good lineup this year of vendors. So it'll mm -hmm. be great. I'm so excited about that. That's going to be awesome. So is it too late to register at this time to exhibit or serve food or sign up to be part of the festivities such as such as the horse races um, this year? No, um, uh, we are taking we're accepting vendors up until uh, July 31st. Um, okay. So they have until the 31st, uh, which is 10 days from today. 10 um, days, to get on it, y'all. As a vendor or um, a food vendor or arts and craft vendor. So let's say there are folks that are new to the idea of coming to an expo like this. So I'm gonna step into their shoes and ask a few questions. What does one wear to such an expo? The number one thing would be to be comfortable for yourself, wear good walking shoes, and then make sure you're dressed for the weather. It is August, <laughs> it's gonna be hot. August in August Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So for those traveling from out of town, where should they stay? The first location I would suggest would be Chickasha. Mm -hmm. That is close enough and they have very nice, comfortable, clean hotels there. Perfect. Yeah, they I, they just built some new hotels too. I think there's a new Best Western. Um, there's a Marriott there, and then there's there's like some um, kind of off brand names hotels too that are a little on the cheaper side. If you're just looking for something, mm -hmm. you know, just lay my head down there and then get up and go to the fair the next day. So I live in Chickasha as well, so I will um, easily get over there. It's about a twenty. Would you say twenty minute drive? Probably twenty twenty five minute drive. Yes. Okay. And if you're willing to go even further out, there's of course Norman or Oklahoma City, but we highly recommend Chickasha just because it is so close and it's yeah. a great little. There's place. also Lawton on the other side as well. Um, oh, they true. have some hotel, uh, some casinos with hotels if people like the casinos. So that's such a good point, actually. Yeah, Lawton, mm -hmm. Oklahoma. That's in the other direction, so that's more what west, southwest, south, something. south. South. Okay. So if you're coming up from Texas or something like that, Lawton would definitely be a good choice. The Fort Sill Apaches have a wonderful casino hotel there. Yeah. Yes. Get the whole And then experience. right off. Yeah. Right off the interstate. I know there's a couple of new hotels also. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Okay. Good to know. So lots of options. Um, or if you want to go and set up a tent, you can also do that. Or if you are RVs allowed or no. Yeah, RVs are allowed. Okay. There's RV hookups out there. And do you have to register for a spot there on the campground area? No, not necessarily register. How we normally do it is like that Monday will allow them to go out there and stake where they want to um, put up their camp. And I know like some families have done it years after year. So everyone knows yeah. like where that, family, <laughs> where that specific family is going to camp. And, you know, people kind of already have their, their um, sparks marked. From right, right. Year. Yeah. Right. Yes. This is the where's area. Don't go there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't touch yes. our pumpkin. <laughs> exactly. Um, we've had a few, you know, there's always a few camping issues that go on at any campsite, but sure. um, my uncle had actually paid for the power pole to be put in for my grandma. So Aww. we still stake the claim to that <laughs> spot. <laughs> I think that's deserving. <laughs> mm. So will y'all be camping out there or? Or are you going to go get some air conditioning in your house? <laughs> I, um, as the president and then just being um, a member of the Apache tribe, we're going to have um, a spot set up, you know, where we can uh, host water, food for oh, any travel nice. members or anybody that might be coming that needs a drink of water or something to eat. So we'll be hosting I that, love that. And we'll have something set up for it the public. That's, that's the Apache hospitality. Thank you so much. Yeah. So earlier I had mentioned the parade starting on August 2nd at 10 a.m. However, I just found out from y'all that there is a second parade this year. That's so exciting. What day will that parade be on? That parade will be on Saturday, August 5th and also start beginning at 10 a.m. Oh my gosh, that's great for people that can't get there until the weekend. So that's yes. fantastic. Where would we park? Because the parade goes down Main Street, right? It, okay. Parking is held on any of the side streets. People are more than welcome to just kind of drive along until they until the police block off the roads. You can try to get your spot in there. Some people like to park and then use the, you know, put their tailgate out and sit there and watch the parade. That's That's great. I love that. So you can park, just get there early. What would you say, like 930 or something? Yeah, and some people okay. start at 9, 9.30, trying to get their spots. Some people are usually out there about 8 o'clock setting out chairs or, yes, you know, right? and stuff like that. You know, Flaming their steak. Because <laughs> just, like just like the campsites, there's certain families that have always been in one specific spot. That's and right. And so they try to get there every year and set out their chairs. Claim oh, that's spot. awesome. I know we used to always uh, stand in front of Settle Studio and Bridal Loft. So I think yeah. that company's still open, correct? Yeah, they are. Yes. Okay, good. So that's where I'll be if anyone wants to come say <laughs> hi. <laughs> Great, nice. um, or hopefully it's not taken up by one of the Wares family. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be um, in the parade. Yeah. We'll be That's waving. That's true. The whole you. Wares family will be in the parade. <laughs> That's true. What am I thinking? And the good um, news about Anadarko is there's no cost for parking anywhere still, right? Correct. Correct. Okay.
great. So this is a fun thing to do with your family. There's no cost for parking. Just come eat some food, watch the parade. <clears throat> so if someone is non-native, should they feel awkward attending an event like this? And will there be other non-natives in attendance? We're getting deep here. They should not feel awkward at all. Um, there are people of all ages, races, sizes, and colors. So there's no reason to feel any kind of embarrassment. Everyone is welcome. Agreed. And and I can also attest to that. Again, I've been going since I was a baby. So um, it's, it's every race. It's people from all over. It is not just for Native Americans. And, and that's that hospitality that I love. Okay. So for uh, most of our events, they are um, free of uh, free entry. Um, but we do have a fee at the gate for the horse racing and the gate for the um, powwow. Okay, great. And um, how much is that fee? So the gate for the horse racing is $20. Um, the gate fee for the powwow is $5. Um, okay. However, I know that if you pay for the horse, if you go to the horse racing during the day, you, you, that you won't pay to get back in. For oh, okay. So you'll probably have like a wristband or something? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so bring a little cash with you. I don't know, do they take credit cards? Uh, yeah, it'll okay. be cash. Just cash, cash only. Okay, no worries. So everyone bring some cash with you. Um, I highly recommend going to that horse race for the $20. And then again, you'll get to go to the powwow as well, which is a great deal. So would you talk about the etiquette of the powwow and what one can expect to see, do, and not do? Where should they sit? I don't want anyone to come and, and not know and feel uncomfortable. As far as seating in the grandstand, we there are plenty of benches and things that are open. So when you come in the gates, you pay your fee, you're right there in the grandstand. And that's typically where the general public will sit and you get the best view of everything that's going on. And one thing to remember as far as etiquette is just be respectful. You know, what you wouldn't want somebody to do to you, you know, don't do to anyone else. And if you want to sure. take photos, you know, it's always fine to take general photos of the activities. But if you're going to get up a, a close up of one person or two people, just ask for verbal permission first. Right. Because would you want a stranger walking up to you and just snapping your photo right <laughs> in your face? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I found that most people are, are super happy to, you know, they want to show mm -hmm. off their regalia. They worked hard on it. And so yes. it's just a matter of saying, hey, can I get a quick picture with you or of you? And if they <laughs> say no, don't take it personally. It's no big deal. No. Maybe they're about to go out and dance or something. So let's talk about the words regalia and costumes. We were talking about respect earlier. So I think this kind of goes along with that. What are your thoughts on the best terminology to use when, let's say, you want to walk up to somebody in their fancy dance wear and tell them, you like their attire, for instance. Regalia is preferred by a lot of people. Um, the word costumes does not go <laughs> over well. You know, you think of Halloween or something like that. But right. yeah, the majority of people will uh, prefer regalia. Or you can just say, may I take a picture of you? Right. You don't have to go into all the nomenclature if you get nervous. Just <laughs> again, exactly, go back to yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good to know. So what do the ceremonies and drumming and dancing typically mean to our tribes? I know that's a big question because it can mean, you know, all different kinds of things to different tribes, but what's the overall feel and reasoning behind these actions? Well, the, to most people, it just brings a real connection to who we are as a people. And it's more than just a way to pass time. And what we do at the exposition is for the public. So you're not going to see us do something that we don't want uh, people to see. It is an exposition of our culture. True. <laughs> True. Okay. That makes total sense. I'm sure some folks will want to know, are there restaurants in Anadarko in case they want to leave the fair to eat? Uh, what places would you recommend there? If you're here during the weekday, the Soda Fountain Eatery downtown is a wonderful little oh, so stop. Good. There's, we also <laughs> have a new one, the Anadarko Grill or the Darko the Grill. Darko Grill. Oh, and then okay. also there's Joe's Burgers. Yeah. Yep. And yep. 
Munoz mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant. Yes. And uh, we also have the casino is always real good. It's always real busy. Ooh. It has a variety um, of different things on the menu. And That's kids fantastic. are welcome. Great. And which casino is that? Is is that Kiowa? Uh, Gold River Casino owned by the Delaware Perfect. Nation. Oh, perfect. Okay. I need to remember to go to those. So I will be visiting them over those days I'm at the fair, but mostly I'm going to be eating fair food. I'm sure everybody will be as well. Yes. <laughs> so. But yeah, there'll be a def uh, several different uh, food trucks out there, whether it's barbecue, Ooh. Indian tacos, you know, um, Cajun food. We, there's a variety of stuff that's coming to town and we are really excited about it. I'm ready to try all the different foods out there. Heck yeah. Oh, you know, something I, I meant to ask you earlier for people who do want to be a vendor, like a food truck or something, who do they contact um, about that? Do they get on your Facebook page and message you or, or what? Um, they can do that, but there is a flyer on there about a food vendor or arts okay. and crafts vendor. Um, and the person of contact is actually myself. Uh, my phone number and my email is both on there. And Perfect. So I would then send you that uh, application. Yes. Perfect. All right. Because there definitely, um, I, I bet there's going to be a lot of food vendors out there. Just like you said, there will be no uh, shortage of food people. So, all right. What other local places should out of towners check out while they're in town? Well, the first place you need to stop when you come into town is the Southern Plains Indian Museum. Free water <laughs> and it is cool. <laughs> we'll break from the heat and you can see the art competition entries while you're here. So after you visit the museum, you're welcome to go next door to the visitor center. We also have the murals downtown at the post office, which is always open and they're wonderful to see. And then we have the Anadarko Heritage Museum and the Wichita History Center. Oh, yeah. Such a great idea. Um, and the murals that are in the post office, and it, it is obviously downtown as well. And the murals are there are uh, from Stephen Mopo. Uh, he is one of the Kiowa Five, also known as the Kiowa Six, the famous Native American artists that actually, you know, basically revolutionized and set the groundwork for Native American art moving forward, in my personal yes. opinion. <laughs> yes. You walk in and it's just, oh, it's breathtaking. Um, on my Native Chalk Talk website, one of the photos on there is one of those pictures from the murals at the post office. So that'll kind of give you an idea of, of what those look like. We all highly recommend you go see those and the other items that were mentioned. There's also an, another event that's going on as well, not to take from us, but the Chamber of Commerce is um, teaming up, you know, with an uh, exposition this year and we're trying to get this thing not where it's only held at the fairgrounds, but it's kind of like a, you know, a, a town wide, um, and, you know, event that's going on. And so they'll be hosting in the on the weekends and the evenings downtown, um, like live bands and, you know, um, drinks outside uh, on the patios of the streets in downtown area. So that's new to me. Um, yeah, that is new. No. Okay. Okay. That is so exciting. So people can go back and forth between the fair. They can go to, um, and, and that is downtown. You said uh, the Chamber of Commerce is putting it on. That's really cool. Yes. Great. So does anyone know if McKee's Indian store is open to the public yet? They, um, they have a grand entry the day of the parade. So their grand entry is immediately following the parade on Wednesday. Grand okay. Entry. Sorry, okay. their grand opening. What did I say? Grand entry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, start <Sorry>. over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let Mary answer that. <laughs> okay, okay, for you listeners, these people have been working 24-7 on this expo. So we're everybody's tired. Um, I, I won't put myself in that category because you guys are doing the hard work here. So um, that's really exciting that, okay. So McKee's Indian store is somewhere that I have been shopping for years. This ring is from there. My earrings are from there. Just about every piece of jewelry I have is from McKee's Indian store. Um, it's been there for many years. The Caddo recently purchased it. And so that's why I was asking, is it open again? Because if y'all are looking for beautiful jewelry owned, you know, put out by Native Americans, the store owned by Native Americans, it's a great way to support our communities. And it's just a wonderful store. There's lots to choose from there. So looking forward to going there myself and seeing all the stuff that they're doing. See, there's so much to do there in Anadarko. 
So thank you both for your time and for this important information. As I mentioned earlier, this expo means so much to so many of us. It's more than just a get together. It's about community and history and survival and resilience and celebration. And I think especially with the years that were recently missed, this event uh, this year is going to come back, you know, stronger than ever. Listeners, whatever you're planning over August 2nd through 5th of this year, 2023, Put aside your plans and come see me, Tanner and Bambi, and come see our proud tribes and the displays of our culture, traditions, and strength. Tanner and Bambi, Yakuki. Thank you. Uh Thanks for listening to Native Chalk Talk. Be sure to join our community on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Simply search for Native Chalk Talk. That's Native, C-H-O-C-T-A-L-K. And check us out at nativechalktalk.com. Stay tuned for the next episode. You're going to love it. Yakoki, thank you, my friends. <laughs>